suspense. And the producer of radio's outstanding theater of thrills, the master of mystery and adventure, William N. Robeson. We are proud to add to our lengthening list of suspense stars, Mr. Bartlett Robinson. Although a newcomer to suspense, Mr. Robinson is a veteran of many years in the theater and motion pictures. Mr. Robinson returns now to his first love, radio, as Dave in A Load of Dynamite, which begins in just a moment. And now... Mr. Bartlett Robinson in A Load of Dynamite, a tale well calculated to keep you in... the same thing in my place. Sure you would. After all, my brother Hal was the only relative I had in the world. So it was only natural to look him up when I got out. I hadn't seen him for a while. Quite a while. And we never wrote. But after all, he was my brother. Now, I'm a pretty careful operator. When I go on a job, I case it first, but good. So I knew just about all there was to know about my kid brother. I knew that he was married and living in a little town in the northern end of the state. I knew that he had a good job. Well, anyway, a a good paying job. It ought to be. He was driving a dynamite truck for the Colossus Powder Company. I even had found out that he was the kind of a cat who helped his wife do the dinner dishes. The only thing I didn't know was what a lovely dish that wife of his really was. There, with the final swipe of the final pot, that does it. That's the helping. Oh, thank you, Mrs. King. Let's do some more dishes soon, huh? It's not always necessary, you know. Sometimes I kiss you just because I feel like it. Like this. Mm. All right, all right, that's enough. (laughs) And give me a minute to fix my face and we'll go see a picture. No pictures tonight, honey. I gotta hit the road at 4 a.m. Oh, gosh, I forgot. What's the run tomorrow? They're reopening the old Three Angels mine up past Convict Lake. Kind of a big deal, I guess. I'm carrying 144 cases. Where is the mine? Up in the mountains? Yeah. You'll be careful, won't you, darling? I'm always careful, baby. You see, I have a great big reason for wanting to go on living. You. I worry so about you. Now, look, Terry. And I wish you were doing practically anything else in the world except driving a high-explosive truck. We've been all over this before, you know, and the answer's always the same. If you can show me anything else that pays off as well as chauffeuring high explosives... Well, I mean, for a guy like me... What do you mean, a guy like you? Well, I'm no Charlie Van Doren, baby. I'm strictly a two years of high school and no special skills boy. And if I wasn't with Colossus, I'd probably be swinging a pick in a construction gang. I know, but... Besides, it won't be forever. Well, two or three years more, and and we'll have enough dough tucked away so we can do... I'm not sure I can take it for two or three more years, Hal. Sometimes when you're away and I'm here alone, it gets to be more than I can... Oh, uh, saved by the bell. I wonder who that is. It's probably Tom and Ethel looking for a canasta game. I'll tell them you have to get to bed early. Well, maybe we could play for an hour or two. Yes? This is the King home, isn't it? Yes, it is. Oh. They told me down the street if I rang the bell and the prettiest girl I ever saw answered it, I was in the right house. They weren't kidding. I'm afraid they don't... Honey. I'll give you three guesses, Hal. Dave. What are you doing here? I thought you were... Now, st- that's what I call a real brotherly greeting. And after all these years, too. Well, do I get invited in? Sort of chilly out here. Come in. Terry, this is my brother, Dave. Hello, Dave. Terry, it's a pleasure. A real pleasure to have the prettiest sister-in-law in the world. What are you doing here, Dave? Doing? I'm paying a little visit to my kid brother who I ain't seen in years. So no fault of his. Okay, okay. Go on, rub it in. In front of your wife. How's tell me all about you, Dave? Yeah, I guess that means I'm off to a bad start with you, huh, sis? As far as I'm concerned, you're off to the best start you could possibly have. You're Hal's brother. Well, thanks, baby sister. You know, you always had all the luck, Hal. A swell job, a nice house, and a beautiful and also understanding wife. Luck? 
I worked for them, Dave. Worked hard to get them, and I work hard every day to keep them. They weren't handed to me on a platter, and I didn't try to take them away from anybody with a gun. How? All right. So I pulled ten years in San Quentin for that stick-up. But I got three off for good behavior. They said I was a model prisoner. Don't that make you proud of your big brother? Oh, sure, sure. Real proud. Ma would be proud, too, if she knew her son was a model prisoner. Now, you look, Hal. You were the death of her, Dave, and I can't forget it. Oh, come off it. I know. I was there. I watched her day after day worrying about you. I watched her worry her life away. Hal, it wasn't my fault. I couldn't help it. You could have helped it. If you'd have settled down to a steady job. But that's something you would never do because you never wanted to. I never did. Before. But a guy gets a chance to do a lot of thinking when he's in queue. Like how to pull bigger jobs when he gets out? Hal, darling, you're not being fair to Dave. Let him talk. All right. All right, talk. You know something, Hal? What? I figured out a lot of things while I was away. I've come to a conclusion. A conclusion that I'm not as smart as I thought I was. Not nearly. Oh, I... I wish I could believe that. I always thought I was the wise guy. You were the chump. But I was wrong. I was dead wrong. Well, maybe it ain't too late to start over again. If people will just forget I'm an ex-con. I'm sure they will. Can you, Terry? Of course. You paid your debt to society. Yeah, well, we'll see. San Quentin is full of two-time losers who couldn't make it on the outside because society wouldn't give them a break. We'll see. Dave... Dave, are you serious, or is this some more of your good intentions? Yeah, you see what I mean, Terry? Nobody believes the next con, including his brother. I believe you. And I want to. You do? If you really want a job, our outfit can always use a good man. Do you mean that, Hal? Yes, Dave, I do. It's dangerous work. You can't scare me. But it pays off plenty. You just got yourself a boy. Fine. Fine, I'll see the boss about it as soon as he gets back from Frisco. That's great. Meanwhile, why don't you stick around here for a few days and take it easy? I I guess you got a vacation coming to you with that. Oh, well, well, I don't know. I don't want to put you to any trouble. I mean, well, would it be all right with you, Terry? It's the way it should be, Dave. You two are real folks. Okay. Okay, so it's a deal. Any beer in the icebox, honey? I wouldn't be surprised. We'll drink to the family reunion. Listen, Dave. There's something I want to tell you before Terry gets back. You don't have to tell me, boy. I know. Dynamite is tricky stuff, huh? Tricky? All you have to do is make one wrong move and you're... So I don't make any wrong moves. Yeah, yeah, but sometimes... Sometimes it happens without your having anything to do with it. The brakes go out on a mountain road. Or a boulder comes rocketing down a hill and you've got to make a fast stop and... Oh, that's a thousand to one shot. You want to try to call the odds on this one? Paul Gordon, one of our best men, was making a run over to Utah last month, just after the deer season opened. A guy missed the buck he was shooting at, but he didn't miss Paul's truck. So that's a million to one. I'd go up against shorter odds than that to get what you got. All right. But I had to tell you before you can watch it. Here comes Terry. Well, here we are. Hey, that looks great. Oh. Beer and salami and Will cheese. Will you do the honors, darling? Sure. Ah, here you are, ma'am. Thank you. Dave? Much obliged. <laughs> and one for old Dad. Now, I'd like to propose a toast. Okay. Let's hear it. Here's to you, Dave. Here's wishing you health and good fortune and happiness. You know, just the best of everything. You mean like Hal's got? Yeah, I'll settle for that. The best of everything. Don't get me wrong. I meant it about wanting to settle down and go to work for a change. Meantime, until Hal's boss got back, I was in Clover. Every day but Saturday and Sunday, Hal was out on the road. And me? I was hanging around the house with that gorgeous wife of his. She couldn't have been nicer. Treated me like I was her brother. But the feelings I had toward her were not exactly brotherly. I tried to control them. I honestly did. Because it was fun to be with her, too. Like the time we went downtown to buy me some decent clothes. With the dough Hal lent me. 
Here's a pretty tie, Dave. It'll go beautifully with that blue shirt you just got. Oh, no stripes, thanks. I've had enough of them. Oh, you promised me you weren't going to think about that anymore, much less talk about it. I promise you anything, Terry. You ought to know that by now. Promises don't mean a thing, not unless you keep them. All right, I promise never to break another promise, okay? Okay. Gosh, look at the time. Yeah, it's 4.30, so what? Hal will be home at 5 today. Oh. Yeah, he likes to have you there waiting for him when he comes home, doesn't he? Yes, he does. You know something, Sugar? I don't blame him. thinking. About what? Did you know every single man in San Quentin has the same dream? He does? Yep. Waking or sleeping, the same dream. What is it? He dreams of what it'll be like when he gets up. And most of all, he dreams of the three things he wants most. What is A? Good clothes, a slick car, and a pretty girl. Was that your dream, too? Yep. And it's all come true. Except... Except what? Except the way I dreamed it, the pretty girl wasn't my brother's wife. She was a faithful wife, all right. She never gave any sign that she realized what I was driving at. And Hal, he went overboard with the devoted brother act. The boss isn't back from Frisco yet, Dave. But there's no rush. Like I said before, you got a vacation coming to you. Hey, do you do you still like to hunt? Yeah, I sure do. Well, why don't you drive into town tomorrow? Get yourself a license. I got a thirty odd six. You're welcome to use. Any deer around? Well, they tell me they're thick as flies around Convict Lake. How about it, Terry? You want to go hunting? Oh, no, thanks, Dave. I just don't like the idea of killing anything. Oh, okay, but I'll bet you seven dollars to a plug dime that you'll eat the venison after I bring it home. <laughs> When he wasn't, Terry drove me nuts. I tried, I really did. I'd, 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 I'd go out for long walks by myself or I'd listen to the radio or try to read. But it was no good. I couldn't get my mind off her. Then one day, we were finishing lunch. It was a warm day and she was wearing shorts and a halter. Another cup of coffee, Dave? Oh, no, thanks. I haven't got any room. All right, then I'll do the dishes. No, oh, I'll clear the table for you. Oh, don't bother. There aren't very many things. I'll just get you cup and saucer and... Terry. Dave, let go of me. What's wrong with you? What do you suppose is wrong with me? Let go of me, Dave. You must be crazy. Maybe I am. I was stashed away for seven years, and I never even saw a woman. And the ones I've seen since I came out, they weren't like you. Take your hands off me, Dave. If Hal knew about this, he'd... Dave, let me go. There's somebody at the door. Yeah, I guess I'd, I'd better see who it is. But if it's Hal... Don't worry. I'll handle it. In just a moment, we continue with... Suspense. And now... We continue with the second act of... A Load of Dynamite... Starring Bartlett Robinson. A tale well calculated to keep you in. Suspense. I felt pretty silly when I opened the door. It was only a girl scout selling cookies. But the interruption gave me a chance to get a hold of myself. And to make the most serious decision I'd ever made in my life. Dave, I've got to have a talk with you. Don't you say it, Terry. Listen to me first. I flipped my lid, sure. But even if that kid hadn't rung the bell when she did, I'd have... You know I'd have stopped. Just for a minute, I forgot you were my brother's wife. But when you said if Hal knew about this, it, it... It pulled me up short. Hal's a great guy, Terry, the greatest. He gave me a real square shake. I'd never do anything to cross him up. Or you neither. It mustn't ever happen again, Dave. It won't, Terry. I swear it won't. 
I'll never lay a hand on you again, as long as you're Hal's wife. Hi, darling. What kind of a day did you have? Oh, you know, the usual thing. How about you? Oh, usual by me, too. I ran five tons of blasting powder to the canyon camp, and that was it. Any news about Dave's job? Hmm. Boss isn't back yet. Right. I hope you can get it set pretty soon, darling. Why? Well, it's just that... Well, I think Dave's beginning to get sort of, you know, restless. He should get restless. A comfortable house to live in, the best meals a man ever put under his belt, and the prettiest girl in the world to keep him company. What more does he want? Uh, where is he, by the way? How do you know? He wasn't here when I got back from the market. Ah, I bet he went to get that hunting license. Well, then why didn't he ride in with me? You, uh, you sound funny, baby, like, like you had something on your mind. Anything wrong? Hal, darling. Come on now, come on, let's have it. What's nibbling on you? How did Dave drink? I don't know. Remember, I haven't seen him for a long time. Why? Well, it's, it's something that happened today. Like what? Well, when I offered him a bottle of beer today, he, he asked me if we had any bourbon in the house. When I told him we didn't, he said he'd have to do something about it. We were kidding, of course, Maybe but... he was, maybe he wasn't. But I better find out before I get him a job. You're asking for it when you mix alcohol and gasoline, but when you add a few tons of dynamite, then you are in trouble. <sighs> you certainly know your way around a kitchen, sugar. That was one mighty fine dinner. I'm glad you liked it, darling. I'm glad I did, too. It sort of kept the family average up. You didn't need a thing. I, I guess I'm worried, Hal. You mean about Dave? Where is he, Hal? Why didn't he come home? Why hasn't he telephoned? Maybe He's something... He's a big boy now, Terry. I know. It goes one of two ways now, sugar. If he meant what he told us the other night, there's nothing to worry about. If he didn't, then it's strictly his headache. Remember, he's still on probation. Oh, poor guy. I'm sorry for him, too, Terry. I know you are. Yeah. I'm sorry for him. And for every other man in the world, because they can't be married to you. You're a darling. Come on, baby. It's time to hit the sack. I heard a noise in the kitchen. There it is again. Well, it's probably Look, just... the light just went on. Well, why shouldn't it? Is that you, Dave? Yeah. Well, come on in for a minute. I'll be right with you. Hey, easy does it, man. Hey, you're lucky I didn't take a shot at you. Why? Because I had a couple of drinks. <laughs> Say, you did it bad, didn't you? Sure I did. I found me a girl in town, a nice, friendly girl. And we sat in the red dog and belted around a piece of booze. Dave, you shouldn't have. You know something, Terry? You're absolutely right. They got fine liquor at the red dog, and like I said, the girl was real friendly, but... It wasn't any good, Terry. It wasn't any good at all. We'll talk about it tomorrow, kid. What you need now is a little shut-eye, and I do, too. I'm making the run-up to that new mine tomorrow. Uh, the one up in the mountains near Convict Lake? Yeah, and with a full truckload, I wouldn't like to fall asleep at the wheel, if you know what I mean. Want me to fix you some coffee, Dave? No, thanks. Want me to help the bed boy? I don't need any help. I'll make it all right. You stay here, Hal. You stay right where you belong. With Terry. Oh. Have time for another cup of coffee, Hal? Yeah, yeah, I guess so. Eddie isn't due to pick me up for ten minutes. Hey. What? You forgot to kiss me this morning. Oh, no, I didn't. I just don't believe it's good for you on an empty stomach. There you are. Ah. <laughs> now the day may begin. <laughs> I think I'll take a cup in today. It'll help wake him up. That's a good idea. Dave. Dave. He's still dead to the world. Go on in. How? Huh? He's not here. 
What? Well, the bed's not even turned down, just rumpled, like he threw himself across it without undressing. I get it. What? Look in the corner, my rifle's missing. He must have gone hunting. On foot? I doubt it. Take a look out in the garage. You're right, the car is gone. He's got a lot of nerve taking off with the car without telling us. Oh, well, it's all right. I won't be needing it today. With the hangover he must have, he's in no shape to go deer hunting. Maybe not to go deer hunting, but I was in good enough to shape to bag what I was after. A 10-ton truck is a pretty sizable target. And when it's loaded with dynamite, you can hit it anywhere and it'll go off. I found me a perfect location. Where the road winds down a steep grade just before you get to Convict Lake. I hid the car in the underbrush and climbed up to the top of the bank. It was rough going. I slipped a couple of times, but I made it in plenty of time. It was nice sitting there in the long morning sunlight, thinking about Terry, thinking about the life we were going to have together. I knew she liked me like a sister, but after a while she'd learned to like me like a wife. I would be so understanding and sympathetic with her in her bereavement. I would be kindness itself. We would be joined in a terrible experience. The tragic accident that had taken away her husband and deprived me of my loving brother. An accident that was about to happen. It was Dave's truck feeling its way down the tricky slope in compound low. I got it full in my sights and waited until it came closer. Closer until I couldn't miss. I aimed for the big white sea and the word Colossus on the side and carefully squeezed the trigger. I quit. What? Yeah, I'm through with dynamite. Won't be so much loot driving freight, but you'll live a lot longer. Oh, darling, I'm so glad. I thought you would be. Whatever made you make up your mind? Well, I... I got scared, honey. Real bad scared for the first time. What happened? I was coming down that steep grade outside Convict Lake when I heard a rifle crack back in the woods. And I thought about the time Paul Gordon got blown up over in Utah when that hunter missed his deer. So I decided life is short enough as it is. Oh, darling, I feel ten years younger. So do I, honey. Oh, point killer. Maybe it's Dave. I'll get it. Oh, look, Hal. There's the sheriff's car parked at the curb. Maybe it's about Dave, then. Yes, officer? Are you Mr. King? Yes. Dave King, your brother? Yes. I'm afraid I have bad news for you, Mr. King. What's happened to him? What's my brother done now? He's killed himself. Oh, no. Oh, I don't mean suicide. It was apparently a hunting accident. What? What happened? He was up in the mountains hunting. He must have stumbled or fell because the barrel of his rifle was plugged with mud. When he fired, the explosion drove the breech block right back into his face. Killed him instantly. Where did this happen? Up near Convict Lake. You know where that steep grade comes down the mountain just before you get to the lake? I know. Sorry to have to bring the bad news, Mr. King. Guess you and your brother were pretty close. Yeah. Yes, we were. Pretty close. of A Load of Dynamite, written by Richard Wheel. Listen. Listen again next week for another tale well calculated to keep you in... Suspense. Supporting Mr. Robinson in A Load of Dynamite were Ellen Morgan, Paul Dubov, and Barney Phillips. Suspense.